Hey guys, it's Rockus. Another video, and this is just going to be a story about um, mainly cars. I have always been such a huge car fanatic. It's a huge interest of mine. Um, I don't know if many other furs are car furs, but this is dedicated for you if you are. And here's a rundown on so far the past, I want to say maybe 12 or 13 cars I've had within the five years of me even being able to have these vehicles. Uh, back starting when I was 16, 17, me and my friends were all riding bikes. And, you know, I was the racing type of person. You know, I loved racing BMX. I went ninth for the state in California for my cruiser division, which is 18 to 25, which it's pretty awesome, you know, I worked my tail off just to get to the, the cups and all that, but, you know, it's a little warm out in Arizona and times have changed a little. My home track is no more, which is just kind of a bummer, so, thought about making the story, and, yeah, so, to begin with this whole car story, um, my very first car was a $700 green, like a forest green, like Pontiac Bonneville. And it was a 1995, it was like the first car I ever got, good deal, $700, grandma daily drove it to church, and I'm like, okay, there should be nothing wrong with it. And it was just to get me to point A to point B. You know, I just got out of high school, graduated with a diploma, and it was like a little graduation present, and it was awesome, it was the greatest freedom ever, ever to have. And had that car continuously kept overheating and it was just awful like I I loved it I could fit four people uh, four 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 with five four BMX bikes four people and still be able to go from city to city on the highway it was just awesome um, it was great for, like, if I wanted to go out somewhere and I didn't want to pay for a hotel, I could sleep in it. And at, you know, 18, you're, you can do that. <laughs> Me being 23 now, it's, it's like, oh, I don't want to sleep in my car. Or I don't have to because... Adventures. After I got rid of the Pontiac Bonneville, uh, I had the tow truck company come and get it away. And that was that. I got, like, 350 out of the 700, so... You know, first cars. Second car um, was my dad's car. It was a uh, 2001 Mitsubishi Eclipse Spider. It was so awesome. Spiders e uh, are convertibles in the Mitsubishi um, and Lamborghini. Lamborghini Spiders convertible. Um, he had a 24 valve. Uh, I think it was a. It, it was just basically stock. It was really cool. Um, you know, convertibles are amazing. I could fit my BMX bike in the back of there without having to, like, you know, four-door scoot it into the passenger or, or to the back and just worry about it, like, hitting the roof or something like that. And, uh, ugh, so much chaos. Cars are chaos. And uh, I ended up giving it back to my dad because he wanted the car back. And he compensated me with like I think one thousand dollars I saved up an extra five hundred dollars and bought my first red Subaru and it was a 1995 it was a 1.8 and I love that thing it was a four-door it had a uh, hella lights in the front of it so it had like like five like it, it was rally lights so I had like a, a push guard in the front of it but it was like a cage to like the engine and to the bottom and it had a skid plate. So I was like, wow, like it had all the bells and whistles. It had a gutted interior. It had like rally lights. It had, you know, like manual, uh, manual windows just to, you know, roll it all down and stuff like that. It was super fun. And it had a red guard. So if you were to, you know, it's an automatic. If you were to let go of it, it sounded like a manual. So you were kind of cheaping it. Um, and after maybe a year, I had an anxiety attack, and I rolled the car. I wasn't able to remember exactly what happened, but 
you know, I'm anemic and hypoglycemic if you get to know me. My sister's a type 1 diabetic. I, I honestly wish her the best. We haven't been in contact since I was 18. But, um, you know, it's just something that runs in a family, you know, like low blood sugar, you know, like I have Mountain Dew that's over in the back of the table over there and just to keep my blood sugar going, you know, and especially for sitting in hot weathers, you just, or, or being in general, just hot weathers, you just want to stay out of it or you just, you know, want to be hydrated, know what you're doing, have a handler and, or have a friend to know your limits. You should know your limits as well. But in this case, I didn't have no AC in the car, and, you know, I should have known myself, you know, it was, it was my bad that I didn't know myself that I shouldn't have been able to drive that day, but I did, you know, but, you know, when you're in the desert in California, uh, more or less like Riverside, um, you know, I'm coming from the beach. Anyways, so I rolled that car. I was very upset. Ended up, you know, uh, going without maybe like three months without a car. After that, I got a red BMW. It was a 1992, what it said, 1992 first generation BMW 325iS E36. And it was a very fast car. Had a moonroof. It was a two door, which is what IS means. A dual overhead cam, and it was red. I named it Bratwurst. It was the coolest car I have probably almost ever owned. And it was fast. It was cool. I had a friend who was like a little bit younger than me at the time who had the M model and it was beautiful it was like a midnight purple we would you know take pictures and we would go at it and stuff like that it was just it was super awesome um losing contact with those friends you know that's what happens when you move to different states it's like oh well well time to make better <laughs> so um uh having that I had issues with it and it became very expensive like I, I, I messed up the water pump and the fan pulley and I happened to end up racking up a bill of just those two the, the fan pulley and the water pump to like $700 and you know it's, it was you know they're nice they're very cheap for resale value but when you go to buy these parts, you understand why. Like, you know, you just don't want to pull out the money because you end up spending more than how much you bought the car within just parts in general, and it's just... You just don't want to do that. Um, so, ended up, I think... I don't think I junked the car. I just got rid of it. I think I sold it to a friend, and it just... Poof. Normally, when you sell a car, it just, you know, you just wipe your hands with it, and it's done. So, that's what happened with that car, you know, in the past. And I ended up really missing my red Subaru. So I bought a 1998 Subaru Impreza uh, EJ 2.2, which is just a 2.2 liter um, L all wheel drive, just the base model. It was white, so I named it Marshmallow. I loved Marshmallow so much that I was an idiot and I gutted the entire interior. I put an intake in it. I, I thought it was cool, it would make more sound. Um, put racing seats in it. it they were um, Evor Plus Sparco seats with Takata uh, four point racing harnesses uh, for both the driver and co pilot gutted the entire car so no back seats to a two-door Subaru it was like a race ready you know it had a stock engine it was pretty cool um it had a lot of this silver stuff I forgot what it was called it was like soundproof to keep like like if it was made for like audio or something like that and back then like maybe two years ago I was into like rally sports I was into a lot of uh going off-roading 
all-wheel drive. This car was amazing. When I say all-wheel drive, like, it was... It did not disappoint when it was, um, you know, doing its thing. You just, you know, it, it was automatic, so you just... I, I, I never even put it in first. It was just a drive, and you could crawl. Not really. But... It was a very nice car. Um, I put red mud flaps on it. My coworkers were joking around saying, hey, you should put green seats in it. It would be like uh, like the ultimate, like, pit my ride car. I'm like, yeah, well, I, I, I know what happened there. And I just kind of lost my love with it, I guess. Um, you know, like, I already had two of these cars, and then... I wanted to get a third one, but I could never see myself getting another one. So I ended up selling that car for about maybe, I believe it was 2500 So I sold that car for 2500 and I saved up for a 2002 Subaru Impreza WRX EJ205. And the EJ205 was fast. It was an all-wheel drive, pushing 325 to the all-wheel. It was a turbo, which is the WRX. Um, t uh, it was a top mount, so it was just stock. Uh, cop access port, stage 2 tuned, uh, downpipe to a 3-inch catback. And it was very fast. Faster than any car that I had owned, because it was quicker than the um, BMW, but it had a blow-off valve, so it kind of didn't, re it didn't feel like I was receiving the power that I wanted to with that car, but um, I, I took this thing snowboarding uh, with me, I drove this car to LA a bunch of times. It looks very fun. The car, I, 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 I um, had the trunk replaced with a STI wing at the time. I guess now it, it's more of like a, like, oh man, like you have a, the STI wing on a WRX, you must be cool. I'm like, well, it actually looked cool. I love the old, uh, what's his name, Solberg, Peter Solberg. And he's a, you know, 2005, he, he raced in the blob eye, and it was, like, my favorite. And I had, like, a Hawkeye version of his car on my dash. And, you know, I just, it was something that I really wanted to work for. And at that point, I was just kind of losing it with Subaru. And I was more missing my, my older Impreza than I was with the newer one. So... Right around that time, I got full Viv, and I ended up selling it. I sold the 2002 Bug Eye, and I was like, I want my Subaru one last time for the older generation. So I got Type RA everything. I ended up getting this um, this other Subaru, selling the Bug Eye for 5,200, bought it for about five grand, so it came up about like 200 bucks, and I got this older Subaru for about, you know, my last one for about $2,000. Type RA everything. Type RA is a very uh, rare edition of the Subaru. Not like 22B status, but, you know, it, it, it's pretty much up there. So I got a 2000 Subaru, and it wasn't a 2.5 RS. It was just a 2.0, which is, which is a good engine. Um, and I ended up, you know swapping out the front bumper taillights wing and it was also a two-door as well so you know I, I replaced it with a recaro seat with covers i never tracked the thing i just like going off-roading and just you know being myself and i never needed a passenger unless if i was to do time course attacks which never happened but that car is very fun it was my last car and I, that was just it. I sold it, and I was like, you know what? Now I want something comfortable. So, met my ex-boyfriend, and he was like, yeah, like, let me get you out of this, like, hoopty. I'm like, 
Okay. All right. All right. Do your thing, buddy. So, I end up getting my first Dodge. My first Mopar car. No par, no car. And it was the Dodge Fart. <coughs> uh, excuse me, Dodge Dart. Still a fart, because, you know, they're no longer anymore. 2016, they're discontinued. And, um... It was very nice. It was a base model SXT. It sucked because it was a 2015 with already 35,000 miles on the dash and was a rental car that I am buying to own. So my ex-boyfriend helped me get 7.9% APR, which is, uh, you know, pretty good if you're new to the credit game and everything like that. And... It was very fun, very boring. It was a 2.4 liter, so you don't expect much. But it was very nice to get into a new car. And it was nice to have a four-door, you know, slip my BMX bike, still be able to fit it in the back. And, yeah, you know, it's still a good car. It was still a great-looking car. Payments were very low. And if I were to ever keep that car or ever have the chance to, I think I would. I was really looking up forward to that car when it came out back in like 2012 or 13 and I wanted it so much because it looked so mean. It was cool. The price um, that it was going for was very applicable. Like it was very, uh, like I could go for it. And I just didn't want it anymore. I wanted something with a little bit more spice. I wanted something that was you know, something more power with the punch. Something that most normal people wouldn't drive or something that I could see myself in and be happy with every single day. So, about last year, in December, I just recently got my 2016 Dodge Challenger. It's a base model SXT, it's a, a 3.6 VVT, um, <clears throat> it uh, has a 0 to 60 of 5.8 seconds that I've done, bought, zero, bought it with 0 on the dash, and I, I, I love that thing so much. I mean, I'd rather have a luxurious car, I'd rather have maybe a car that I already own because payments are payments are a pain and it's it's not going to get any more simpler than that it makes so much sense for people you know adults people who are you know on the same level as I am it can always be better but it can always be worse i always look up to those you know sayings cuz it's true but if you want to be happy be happy with what you are given or left with. In other words, make use of what you can and just be happy with it. I'm happy that I get to do videos. I'm happy that I get to drive. I'm happy that I get to fursuit. I'm happy that I can be a part of the furry fandom. And, you know, I can go to the furry fandom and not worry about having to talk about cars or having to not worry about being in fursuit because I'm just you know, that person, or I can go to a car meet and just be myself, you know, and I'm comfortable, you know, and you should too. You should be very comfortable with any life decision or option that you make in life and make the best of it. That's what life is about. Make life, you know, uh, count every day and just have fun. So, uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of, I don't think I'll be doing a lot of car talk unless you guys don't mind, but nonetheless, um, these were just the cars that I wanted to list. There was some stories that, you know, I am going to be wanting to talk about, wanting to share with you guys. We'll be sharing all over Facebook, YouTube, and Amino, possibly Twitter and Instagram. So if you guys follow me there, you guys will see all of my latest stuff and all of the fun 
that I have to unveil, you know, time and time again. And, uh, yeah, I really honestly couldn't thank you guys enough for watching my videos, and I'll see you next time.